SpaceX Starlink drops the data cap, but hard throttling might be back. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside smokiness, guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. Today is a big day, actually. We've been waiting for this for a while. And I've been alluding to this for quite some time. I said, you know what? I think SpaceX Starlink is going to continue to kick the can down the road when it comes to the data cap, where they were saying that they were going to implement a one terabyte data cap for residential or standard coverage or standard users. And once you get past that, you would have to pay 25 cents per gigabyte thereafter if you want priority access or the faster speeds. If not, you would be deprioritized and basically you would have best effort type of coverage where everything would slow down in half. And I said this was not going to happen because there was a lot of different reasons. Number one, they were going to add a lot more satellites into LEO. There was a lot of things going on on the ground, new ground stations and yada, yada, yada. Anyways, so this was my thinking or rationale behind it. And I thought that they were going to continue to kick this can down the road. And that's exactly what is going on. But this time it might be kicked down the road indefinitely where they said there is no data caps. That's kind of the end of it, not postponing it for another month and another month and another month. Originally, we were supposed to get data caps back in November and then it went to January and February, March. Finally, it was like the end of April. We were going to see the one terabyte data cap and it didn't happen, thankfully. But things are not all sunshine and roses because there are some other issues that I found in this new update that they've made. And I want to go over those. One of them has to do with data caps when it comes to priority access or priority service. You're still going to have data caps for those services. Also, I found that best effort service is not talked about at all. It's almost like it's disappeared. But if you look on the site, they still talk about best effort. The question is, is is there a best effort and can you get best effort when you do not have coverage in your area anymore? I don't know. The other thing is that I do believe that there is going to be some type of hard throttling going on based on their lingo, their verbiage, how they state things in these documents. So if that's the case, we're going to see slower speeds instead of faster speeds. So we're going to dive right into all of this in this video. But before I do, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. If you want to contribute to the channel, you can. There's a little thank you button right down here. You can click on that. Also, if you enjoy this video, even in the least, consider throwing it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. And if you're not subscribed as of yet, please do so. And then click this button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, don't forget about the donation to St. Jude's. We're doing the 3,000 push-ups for this month. Every single day, I'm going to be doing 100 or even more push-ups to make that 3,000 amount. I'm hoping Hoping for a dollar per push-up, that would be $3,000. I want to say thank you to everyone because in the last 48 hours, I think we've already raised about $400 or $500 for St. Jude. So that is awesome. Also, if you're looking for a VPN or like me, faster speeds and better reliability with your SpaceX Starlink, and maybe you have another service that you can combine together or bond together, check out Speedify. If you go over to their website, speedify.com, and you use promo code jchristina, you're going to get 20% off. Also, down below, there'll be a link. If you just click that link, you're going to automatically get that additional 20% off to the current percent off that they have. I think they have a summer sale going on. Go check that out. Anyways, let's dig right into this data. I know you wanted me to compile this for you, and I have. So I hope you appreciate this. We did this last night and this morning, and I just there's a lot of great information here, juicy information. So I hope this helps you. Anyways, I got an email, like a lot of you did last night, stating, hey, listen, things have changed. The email went something like this. Good news. Your Starlink subscription will remain unlimited and will no longer be deprioritized after one terabyte 
terabyte of data use. Now, this only holds true with the standard and residential plan. The data caps do remain when it comes to priority plans, and I will get into that in just a moment. They continue with, we've updated our terms and conditions to reflect this change. See the Starlink fair use policy to learn how we manage our network for the benefit of all customers. We've also introduced the ability to easily change your service plan on your account portal or the Starlink app. There are four types of service plans available. Now, this is where they change things up and they do this all the time. The names change, what you get, what you don't get. My goodness, Starlink, get it together. Anyways, we have a standard plan. Now, that standard plan is basically your residential plan. They call it standard now. And what's interesting here is that SpaceX's website calls it still residential, even though in here they're calling it standard. Does that mean that they're going to change it in the near future? Probably, but it's basically just semantics here at this point. Now, what I did find is there's no price on that main page, whereas all the rest of the pages tell you how much the kit is and how much it is per month. For residential or for standard, it doesn't say anything. And I think the reason behind that is because some of us are paying $90 a month. Some of us are paying $110 a month and others of us are paying $120 a month. Why that is, I don't know. According to what they said originally is based on congestion, but that doesn't make a lot of sense, but this is what they're saying. So there is almost like three tiers or three price plans, even though it's the exact same plan, but just for different people. I don't know. Anyways, the next plan is the priority plan, and that is what they used to call business, right? So priority plan is the high-speed data plan, let's call it, and they say high-speed, low-latency, broadband, internet business across the globe, even in the most rural remote locations, $250 per month and a one-time fee of $2,500 for the equipment. So that is 4X over the residential plan. Now, they also have a mobility now. They used to call it roam, right? Now it's called mobility. Now mobility states this, it says portable land use such as RV and camping. Visit the roam information on our website. Just change the stuff. It's just crazy. So roam is now mobile and mobile is $150 per month. And your kit is the same as a residential kit, which is $599. Now, the final plan is mobility priority. Now, this is stated as maritime, in motion, and high demand mobile use. So this is the type of plan that you would get for an RV or on a truck, a commercial truck, a business truck, or maybe on a boat or something. It is in motion and you're going to be paying more. It's $250 a month for the service and $2,500 for the equipment. So it's the same price as priority, but priority is fixed, meaning that it's a business or a location somewhere and your dish sits on the roof someplace and it's there permanently. It's fixed, whereas mobility priority is not. So it's very similar, but one allows motion and one does not. But what's interesting here is the speeds are the same. So what is the purpose of getting a priority or a business coverage for the exact same price for the equipment, the same price for the monthly in comparison to just getting mobile priority for the same price. I don't really get it because the speeds are the same. They're saying about 220 megabits down maximum speed for the business or priority in comparison to mobile priority. Don't understand it, but who knows? Maybe that'll become clearer in the near future. Once again, this is brand new information. It's only hours old. They will probably hone it down a little bit and kind of buff it and polish it a little bit more. Now, when you go over to the website, you're gonna see residential, business, roam, and mobility. So that has to all change because those are no longer the plans, okay? According to what they're saying, it's standard, priority, mobile, and mobile priority. I don't know. Anyways, like I said, they'll buff it and hopefully make it better and more understandable. So this all appears to be a major win for the majority of Starlink users, kind of, sort of. I do find, like I said before, there are some negatives here that I'm going to get into before the end of this video. Now, when I was looking at SpaceX's fair use policy, I found out that they no longer talked about a 25 cents per gigabyte of data any longer. Once you use your, let's call it priority data, it would now bump you back to basic data. And when they did that, if you want to get back to priority, you would have to pay or you would stay at basic data speeds for the rest of the month. 
That's not in there anymore. That lingo is gone. So once again, showing that there is no more data cap for residential or for standard coverage, but that does not hold true when it comes to priority coverage. And I'll get into that in just a second. Now, remember customers that had Roam or now called mobile, well, they were on best effort anyway. So they didn't have to worry about deprioritized data or slower data because their data was slow anyways. Right guys? So the download speeds for their standard plan or their residential plan now called standard is 25 megabits to 100 megabits. And that is very important. Remember that 25 megabits to 100 megabits. Remember the roam or mobile plans are still at the five to 50 megabits or the equivalent to best effort. We do not have to worry about that anymore because we're not going to be quote slowed down once we hit that data cap, which is no longer in existence of one terabyte. That is really good. Now, just a side note here, according to the FCC, this is important to be classified as a broad broadband internet company, you need to be able to have a 25 megabit down speed and three megabit up speed. Anything slower than 25 megabits is no longer considered broadband. That is very important to the FCC for any company or any internet service provider to be able to state that they're providing broadband to its customers. Now, I was looking at the actual plan. They brought it up and they showed the speed differences. And here, you can see the different plans, standard, priority, mobile, and mobile priority. I'll bring this up on the screen. You can take a snapshot of it so you can make note of what the upload speeds and the download speeds are for all of the various plans or the new plans or the newly named plans or whatever you want to call them. So despite the apparent removal of the data cap language that we see in the SpaceX, Starlink, let's say update to their documentation, well, SpaceX is still throttling its subscribers' connections. Now, the reason I say that is in here, it does state this. Now, listen to the verbiage here. Quote, if bandwidth patterns consistently exceed what is allocated to a typical residential user, Starlink may take network management measures such as temporarily reducing the customer's speeds to prevent or mitigate congestion of the service. They continue with bandwidth intensive applications such as streaming videos, gaming, or downloading large files are most likely to be impacted by such action. So the question here is what is typical? What is allocated to a typical residential user? We don't know what that amount is, but if you exceed that virtual amount, you're going to be throttled. That's number one. Now, there's some other hard throttling that I want to talk about in just a minute, but I want to get back into some of these data rates because some of you guys are going to want to know. Now, it's important to bear in mind if you want top speeds and you have priority or mobile priority. Now, those speeds are currently about 40 megabits up to 220 megabits down speed, which is fantastic. But there are data caps when it comes to priority. What this means is, is for your $250 a month, you will get one terabyte. You're like, wait a second, Joe, I thought there was no more data caps. Well, like I said at the beginning, there's not data caps if you have residential or standard, but there is data caps if you have priority. That's mobile or mobile priority. So it's $250 for one terabyte, it's $400 a month for two terabytes, and it's $1,500 per month if you want four terabytes of priority mobile data. And it goes up from there all the way up to about $5,000 per month you can spend based on how many terabytes of data of fast data you want mobily. All right. This is very important to keep in mind because data caps are still there. They're just not there for residential but throttling maybe. So this is very important information. If you use Starlink mobile, either mobile or mobile priority, you're going to end up paying up if you want to use more than that one terabyte that they allot you of prioritized data. So if customers exhaust that data, that priority data, they could either pay up for another terabyte or they can buy it per gigabyte going forward for the rest of the month to when it recycles again and gives you that one terabyte back of mobile or mobile priority. Now, if you remember, 
remember, SpaceX initially announced their high-speed data cap to address their network congestion issues. Now, these issues were due to the popularity of their service. As an ISP, they have grown massively from about 140,000 users up to over a million users using SpaceX Starlink as of today, and that number is growing daily. So the decision to cancel the data cap most likely has to do with, like I've speculated in the past, number one, they've launched a ton of new satellites into orbit over the last four or five months, 50 at a time when it comes to the version 1.5s and 21 at a time when it comes to the version two minis. So this is a major, major increase in capacity. Secondly, we have to bear in mind that SpaceX did increase its price in February. So a lot of people went from $110 to $120. As of right now, I'm $110, but a lot of you have written into me and said, listen, our rate went up to $120. While a few of you, a small percentage, I would say no more than 5% of you have said that your rate went from $110 down to $90. Like I said, why there's three tiers due to congestion is what they're saying, I don't know. They need to really kind of hone that in. Maybe make it 105 for everyone, kind of get it together or 110 for everyone or whatever, but it just doesn't make sense. Having 90, having 110, and having some people paying 120. To me, I would rather see everyone that has standard or residential with one specific bill in the United States. If they wanna have different prices in different countries, okay, I get it. But in the US, there should be one price. That's my personal opinion. So I'm sure all in all, the majority of you are very happy with this new turn of event where we're not going to have a data cap and we're not gonna have to worry about going from standard coverage down to deprioritized coverage where it is half the speed. But what are the speeds? What are those data rates? And will they be capped? So what does this mean? I'm glad you asked. Well, according to the document, standard plan or residential plan is giving us 25 megabits to 100 megabits. My question is, since there's no more priority data and deprioritized data or best effort for a residential or a standard plan, what does this mean for the top speed? When they're saying 25 megabits to 100 megabits, does that mean that we're going to be hard capped? Is there going to be a limit? Is it a throttle at that 100 megabits or will it be a soft limit that will allow it to go faster if there isn't congestion. That is a big major deal because right now I'm getting sometimes 150, 180 down, sometimes 220, 240 down. The problem that I have with this and the reason why I'm speculating that there will be a hard throttle at that 100 megabits, why will people want to get priority or business class that is going to give you that 220 down when residential is going to get it during off-peak time or during non-congested time anyways? This is a very big problem and a big question. Now, I do not have the answer to this for you, but I'm gonna start as of today testing and writing it all down and documenting, and then maybe on Friday, we'll talk about it a little bit more on the live show or maybe next week, because this is very, very important. So once again, the question, and I want you to answer it down below in the comments, will there be a soft throttle or will there be a hard throttle? And could I be correct in saying that SpaceX doesn't want to step on the heels of the customers that have purchased priority access or priority programs? It doesn't matter if it's mobile priority or just simply priority. Do they not want to step on the heels of these customers that are paying four times the cost for the equipment and more than double for the actual monthly fee? Once again, down below, let's have this discussion. And on Fridays, don't forget to join me live for the JC Live Show. Every Friday at about 8 p.m., 9 p.m., right around there, we are live. And we talk about all this kind of stuff. Tech, photo, and video live. Answer any questions. Usually we're on for about an hour, sometimes two hours, sometimes longer, hanging out with you guys. So if you want to get notification, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and then click this little button here so when I do go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Don't forget to throw this video a thumbs up if you found value in it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years.
shares, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.